Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a video on how people get rich and stay rich and preserve their wealth and I'm going to talk about how it can be slow and how it can be fast depending on which route you take. So what I'm going to be talking about is assets. What is an asset? Well simply put it's something that puts money back in your pocket rather than taking it away but technically put an asset is something of value that an individual organization or entity owns or controls which has the potential to generate economic benefits in the future assets can take various forms including physical possessions financial holdings intellectual property and or even intangible resources so here are a few common types of assets tangible assets these are physical objects that can be seen on untouched such as real estate or property, vehicles, equipment, inventory or machinery. Financial assets, these include monetary instruments or investments such as stocks, bonds, cash, bank accounts, mutual funds or certificates of deposits. Intangible assets, these are non-physical assets that lack physical presence such as patents, trademarks, copyrights, brand recognition, goodwill or intellectual property. Fixed assets. These are long-term assets with a useful life beyond a year, such as buildings, land or large machinery. Current assets. These are short-term assets that can be converted into cash within a year or a regular operating time, such as cash, accounts receivable, inventory or prepaid expenses. So now you know what an asset is, I'm going to go into why having assets is good so simply most assets are a hedge against inflation but i'm going to put on screen a few reasons why assets can be beneficial so for preservation of value so hedge against uh, inflation like i say such as real estate or precious metals like gold they um historically demonstrated the ability to retain or increase value over time when inflation occurs the general price level of goods and services rise which can erode the purchasing power of money by owning assets that tend to appreciate or at least maintain the value individuals can help protect their wealth against the negative impact of inflation income generation many assets have the potential to generate income for example for example, rental properties can provide regular rental income, stocks can offer dividends, and bonds can provide interest payments. When inflation occurs, the prices of goods and services tend to rise, which can lead to higher rental rates, increased company profits, or higher interest rates. As a result, the income generated from these assets may also increase, helping to offset the effects of inflation. Diversification, holding a, diver holding a diverse portfolio of assets can help mitigate risks and increase the chances of maintaining or growing wealth in the face of, inf in the face of inflation. Different assets may respond differently to inflationary pressures. For instance, while inflation may negatively impact the value of cash or fixed income investments, it could benefit assets like commodities, real estate or certain equities by diversifying across asset classes. Individuals can spread risk and potentially benefit from assets that perform well during inflationary periods. Leverage. In some cases, assets can be used as collateral to secure loans or lines of credit. During periods of inflation, the value of assets may increase allowing individuals to access additional borrowing capacity based on the appreciated value of their assets. This can provide liquidity and financial flexibility to navigate inflationary environments. Sorry for so much talking, there's just a lot of information I can't really miss in this part of the asset video. But now I'm going to talk about mainly property because that's where I've got the interest and the knowledge. So property investment it's the most common asset people hold as well. Property investment is definitely old, but gold as the saying goes. But something you might not know is that 
your house is not an asset, your own house that you live in. Because you pay the mortgage, you're paying out for expenses like mortgage. I guess the things you have in your house don't really change the value of it, but like everything to maintain the house, taxes, all of it's taking money out of your pocket, which is the definition of a liability. It's not putting money in your own pocket until you then sell it. So, but most people think if they sell a house, don't, they'd usually be buying a more expensive house anyway. Not not always, but if you sell your house, you want to, you've earned a load of money while you've just lived in it for how many years and it's gone up in value, you then sell it, you most likely going to buy a more expensive house because you've now got more money. Not definitely, but just a thought. So, becoming asset rich is a slow and gradual process, depending on which route you take. So, again, most people are working that get into property investment and then they buy a house that probably takes them a long time to acquire nowadays because you've got to get a big deposit and you've got to earn a certain amount to even be able to put a deposit on a house if it's for renting out because the banks, if you do it through the banks again, want to know like they're safe and you're not going to lose any money. So slow and gradual requires a significant amount of your own money and this is why it takes a lot of time to accumulate wealth through property investment. In the beginning, there may be upfront cash flow until there may not be upfront cash flow and lot anyway, until your assets grow larger. So if you was just to have like one property, you think all these people that own properties are really rich, but when you think about it, they've, if, they, if they've got all the money investing in a property, that's all the money they could just have sat in the bank to use now. Instead, it's in a property and they can't get anything out for at least three years, again, depending on what they do with the banks, because you can either have three year or five and so on. So they've got money, they've got all the money sat in a house, which is earning them, again, it depends, but your average like rents probably eight nine hundred where I live anyway, and for like a two hundred grand house. So then they've also got the mortgage that they then have to pay off, or oh, unless again it all depends. If they could have an interest only mortgage, they could have a repayment, usually for rental. Interest only makes more sense. Um, so then you minus that off of the actual rental value and mortgage rates are going up. So people are starting to struggle and there's actually some people that have properties that are literally earning a hundred or two hundred pound a month off of their investment property. And it's like, what is the point? I might as well not have it. So like I say, you think they're all rich, but if they've got one or two properties or three, four, even they can still be struggling. So, yeah, the smaller, the less you have, the harder it is. And that's why when recessions happen and when there's a bit of friction in the market, the rich just get richer because the small people down at the bottom that have these properties can't afford to keep them. So then the rich people at the top, when everyone sells up the properties, then get all the properties. So... Just how it happens. There can be challenges, I guess, within property. There's, besides the whole big initial investment, if you're paying for things yourself, and you can have difficult tenants. There's rarely bad things that happen, unless depending on what areas you're buying, but you need to know your area. And you can obviously have problems with people not paying or people trashing the place, etc. Uh, navigating mortgage requirements, like I say, if you work with the banks, it's just a problem. And then potential government regulations. I'm not going to talk a lot on this, but 
they're just trying to make it as hard as possible for landlords because they don't want landlords, they want to own everything. Okay, so I'm not going to go too deep because people won't understand unless they know things about property, but if you choose to build a property portfolio, personally, it can take longer. Whereas if you want to build a property through a business, it can make it easier, but it's just more complicated and you obviously got to set up a business and it's time consuming. And there's a lot you got to do with like accountants and different other organizations. To afford property deposits and investments, it's often necessary to have another source of income and a stable wage. So that's the problem with putting your own money into things. The drawback of becoming asset rich is that the time it takes to accumulate a decent amount of wealth is just massive, really, <laughs> unless you've got loads of money. It's going to take a long, long time. So you may be too old to enjoy the benefits of the money you require by the time you acquire it. And this is what it talks about in a, in the book, The Millionaire Fast Lane. He sees all these old people in their Ferraris and that, and they say yeah, they're almost too old to enjoy it. However, being asset rich provides the opportunity to opportunity for passive income as rental properties can generate ongoing cash flow additionally property owners can leverage their assets by remortgaging and extracting equity so that's getting a bit deep but after a certain amount of years depending on which mortgage you take three year five year like i said you can then remortgage so what you do is you take the money out on how much the house has gone up in value over the time you've owned it so that's a good thing However, like I say, the banks just don't want you doing this, so they'll just give you bad rates and then you can't actually pull as much money out as the house is actually worth. This can provide financial flexibility and free up time in the future as income becomes more passive. So you have money coming in without having to actually do much unless something goes wrong uh, or you need to like every now and then when a tenant goes out you might need to touch up things after years you might need a new carpet or some paint in conclusion the choice between being cash no i'm not talking about that i was going to talk about cash rich versus asset rich but it would have been too confusing so asset rich is slow to accumulate but it can offer passive income and more free time in the future what so i'm going to finish with just kind of going over everything but what does it mean to be asset rich being asset rich means having a significant amount of wealth tied up in assets such as real estate stocks and other investments asset rich individuals typically have a diverse portfolio of investments which generate income or appreciate in value over time pros of being asset rich Potential for higher returns with a diverse portfolio of investments. Asset rich individuals have the potential for higher returns on their investments. Hedge against inflation. Unlike cash, assets often appreciate in value over time, providing a hedge against inflation. Diversification. An asset rich portfolio can provide diversification and protection against market vol volatility. Cons of being asset rich. Liquidity risk. Depending on the type of asset, liquidity can be an issue, making it difficult to quickly convert investments into cash. Volatility. Market volatility can impact the value of investments, potentially resulting in losses. Potential for overvalued assets. Overvalued assets can lead to losses and reduced overall wealth. Right, that is the video, mostly an informational video, but some people might want to know about assets, so there's the video. Thanks for, for watching, please subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss any good uh, informational, so word, definitely, content. See you in the next one.